Hey guys, Luke here, we're back with another episode of my Dream Team Tour. Whoops. Uh, I went to go press play match, but actually press match settings. Uh, so let's not worry about that, let's get into the game. It's as it And as it's loading, uh, I'll take the time to, as I've been doing lately, to ask you to leave a like. Um, or just to remind you to make sure to leave a like. If we can hit five likes, that'd be cool. If not, whatever. I'll be I'll be just I'll be depressed and um, I'll never make a video again. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, just leave a like and make sure you subscribe. Hopefully, we can hit 500 subscribers soon. Um, been getting a few subscribers as of late, so that's pretty cool. Hopefully, we can keep it up. So here's uh, my dream team. And as you can tell by the title, we're taking on a team full of five eights. Now, I'm not going to lie, this was the hardest team to make thus far. Obviously, I've only made the fullback, centers, and wing. But, yeah, the 5-8, definitely the hardest. I suspect half-pack will probably be even harder. Um, I can almost guarantee it be even harder. It's more, more trying to find who's, who's a 5-8 and who's a half-back. What I should have done is just did a halves team in general. Just like a straight-up half-side rather than specifically 5-8. Um, that would have made things a lot easier and would have given me more of a range of players because in this side um, you know, I've got some reserve graders and players who don't necessarily play all the time that sort of stuff um, But yeah, let's get into the side Set so fullback we got Gareth Widdop um, On the wings we've got Jamie Soward and Blake Austin uh, In the centres we have Ben Roberts and Corey Norman The halves are Jared Mullen and Robert Louis uh, Front row is Josh Reynolds, James Maloney and Terry Campisi um, second row is Kieran Foran, Brave Finasta, and the lock is John Sutton. And the bench is Aiden Caesar, Daniel Holdsworth, um, Chad Townsend, and Thomas Lulawa. Now, some of them pick themselves. Obviously, we got, you know, Anastas played second row, and lock, Sutton. Sutton plays lock. He played lock in the grand final. Oh, sorry, he played second row in grand final, actually. Um, Foran's played, um, like, center, and he can play forward. You, you know he can. He just doesn't. Um, Gareth Widdop's played fullback for England. Uh, he's just a quality player in general, uh, and I think he, I really think he could play, you know, fullback centre everywhere. He's just a really class player, to be honest. Um, Blake Austin's filled in everywhere. Corey Norman could probably play centre if needed. He's sort of a mixed, mixed, Mister Fixer as well, and I'm sure Josh Reynolds would love to get in and play prop. Um, well, probably not, but. You know, I, I would back. I would back him to go in and play. Oh my God, he got out. WTF, man! We're supposed to be smashing these dudes. So we we'll go over the whole selections. So I just touched on Widdop just a little bit before. He's at fullback. So in 2010, I'm gonna say he was playing reserve grade, and he got he played like a few games during the Origin series. I remember he tore up Bulldogs one time um, from fullback, I think, and. He ended up getting picked for England to play fullback like mid-season. Uh oh, that was a bad offload, bad offload by me. Terrible decision, my fault. Damn. But yeah, you have some talent to get picked for England from reserve grade, pretty much. And you know, it's a good choice for them because he turned out to be a, a superstar player, in my opinion. I think he's a lot. I think he's very underrated because he's at the Dragons, who aren't really a high-profile club at the moment, and also because he's English. Now, I know that the the trend these days and we pick off an intercept there, that was just too easy to read. Um, I think it was Louis to his half partner at the Cowboys. Um, but I know the trend right now is that England players are good, but I think that's that's just, you know, the, that's just pretty much just Graham and Burgess, to be honest. Like, you look at Tompkins, he's in the same category. A really good player, but doesn't get looked at because he's, you know, at the Warriors and he's English. Um, yeah, that's just my opinion of Widdop. I think he is a superstar. He saw the Dalian poles. He was up there. He's, he carried the Dragons to whatever position they got. I know they, they missed out on the eight, but not by much. I mean, they had that that on the siren thing to the Dragons. Um, they went close to winning the last game of the season, which would have put them in contention, I think. Actually, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's not the wit up. We sort of bullshitted enough there. Oh, can we get through? We're supposed to draw him in, James. What are you doing? Um, yes, yeah, so Jamie Soud's on one wing, and the reason for this is, you know, he's a bit of a cat, and he does, well, I don't know if he does it right now, does it anymore, but he used to defend on the wing, so I thought, you know, defending on the wing, playing wing, same thing, close enough for this side. So Jamie Soud's there. Um, yeah, and once again, I want to stress that this isn't, like, necessarily all the best 
five eights in the game. It's the most suitable I come up with. As to like, you know, the actual halves themselves aren't that good. It's just the other players in the side were more suitable. So it was trying to fit everyone in. And also, yeah, like, we could have put Carney in, but didn't really want to because he's not playing. I'm sure there was some Super League people that we could have put in as well, but I don't really know enough about the Super League um, to include them. I mean, I can look at their stats on here, but, you know, there's a lot of people whose stats are very inaccurate. On, on this game, you think Aiden Guerra was um, some reserve grader. So that, that's just something to, to something to look at. Um, so yeah, Jamie Soward, he was one wing. The other wing was Blake Austin. He's yeah, he's played everywhere. I think he probably has even played wing this year. He's, yeah, like I said, he's played everywhere. He played fullback, five A hooker, second row lock, coach, everything. Oh, great ball! No, it wasn't a great ball. Um, yeah, so enough of that. Ben Roberts, he's played centre before, and I think he'd probably be a good centre. Um, he's got good footwork. He's probably his strongest point, and he can put in those little grubbers in that, you know, you see Jamie Lyon and stuff do that, they work really well, especially he, he does his weird sort of grubber that bends and it's so effective if he does it, um, and also it take a lot of the decision making off him, which would probably be a good thing for him, um, but yeah, he's in there, where he plays at Eels and he kills some team, uh, but I think it was a decent side, he played very well, got man of the match, Ed Setter, never played there again, Cora Norman, Kind of, I knew he could be in the backs easy. Obviously, he's played a lot of fullback, but I thought Widdop would be in a better choice there. I originally had him penciled in, but swapped in the Widdop. Um, but the center spot, we needed a center. I didn't know who to pick there, so we just threw him in there. Most suitable out of the rest. Let me go to the halves. The actual 5 8 of the team, we've got Jared Mullen, who I didn't know where else to play him. He, he doesn't really seem big enough to play forwards, too good to be on the bench. And Robert Louis was the half because. I want him in the starting side so we could bash him. I had him, had him as prop, but I decided to change it for Cam because it looked ridiculous having Cam as the um as the halfback of this side um, in a team full of five eight. It just didn't feel right. An old guy like Cam Peasy. Uh oh, what the hell, Burgess? That's Burgess' fault. Clough Churchill, and you're doing that? Come on. So then we got Josh Reynolds at prop. Who, like I said before, probably would relish playing in the front row. He just a real competitor. He's not really the most skillful fly back. I know this is so cliched, um, and you know it's, he says it millions of times himself. But he's not the most skillful fly back by any means. He just his whole thing is passion, and that's what you need in a prop. And that's what you would get with Josh Reynolds if he played front row. Just someone who would run hard. Probably wouldn't be that effective at prop, but you know he would he would do it if needed. And yeah, that's why he was selected. We got James Maloney at hooker, who, I mean, pretty much all of these guys could probably play hooker at a stretch. Um, Foran, I think, has played hooker. I don't know. I think Foran would be a good hooker, but we wanted him in the second row. Ooh, was hoping Tompkins could just take him on there. What sort of do we do? Do we bomb it? Oh, that was a shit kick. That was a shit kick. That was going over the dead ball line. Um, yeah, so we move on to Terry Campisi. Uh, who was the other prop, and also I forgot to talk about Maloney. He's just another little niggler like Reynolds, who people want to see smashed, and he's in the middle at, uh, at hooker. He'd probably do some, some good um, work out of dummy half, but I don't know how he'd handle it. But it's kind of good to see the little novelty, be quite funny, see him getting smashed, have to work a lot. And Morris just destroys it with it there. Great tackle. Terry Kambees, he says it himself, he's big, he's slow, he's a prop. Um, and then we've got Kieran Foran and John Sutton. Oh, sorry, Kieran Foran, both and Braith and Asser are second rowers. Kieran Foran, he's another one like Reynolds, just so much passion. Not necessarily the most skillful player. He does have a lot more skills than Reynolds. Don't get me, don't get mixed up there. Um, he definitely has the skills to be a five-eight. He just, but he's also got that passion that Reynolds has. That's a shit part. Oh, it's a good pass. I lied. I was going to put up a bomb, just for the sake of it. He's offside, sir. He's offside, ref. What are you doing? Call it. Alright, come out, Inglis. Wow, they're defending very well. For a team of 5 8s, they're defending extremely well. Alright, Hainsey. And Austin takes it over Jared Hain. As if that would happen. Well, it probably could. Um, yeah, so. Kieran Foran, he, I think he's self-explanatory. He's just he's so tough. He's just a footballer. Like he could play anywhere for sure. I think he, I think he even played centre when he first came in 
don't quote me on that, but if someone can look that up and leave in the comments, that'd be awesome. But I think he did play Senna at some stage for Manly when he first debuted, I think. Then we got Braith and Asta, who I think he he played lock definitely for the Bulldogs at some stage. I don't know. It wasn't. I don't think it was a permanent move or anything. I think they were trying to move uh, first then in. Um, and also for the Roosters, he played a little bit there too. So he's in the forwards. But I thought Sutton was the more suitable thing for Locke because Sutton's, you know, he's played lot Locke a fair bit as well as playing um, five eight. Obviously, um, we could have put him in at lock, uh, second row considering he's, you know, won a grand final playing second row. But um, I thought he's more suitable for the lock position. And then that that's all the starting lineup done. The the bench isn't really that big of a deal to be honest because it's just a bunch of random players, random five eights that we put in there. Uh, so we've got Aiden Caesar, who, you know, he's a good player. He's probably the most solid out of these these guys, the biggest one. Um, but, yeah, he, he wouldn't really fit into the forwards. He wouldn't fit into the backs. He's just he's just a half. He's probably he's probably more of a half back than a 5'8", but, you know, he's wears the number six every week for the Titans, and that's where he is um, in this side. Well, he's not wearing the number six, but he's in a 5'8". Uh, and then we got Daniel Holdsworth. Uh, Todd Tani probably would have been in this side, but it's just the fact that he got sacked, and I didn't feel it would be right to put a sacked player in this side. So we ended up um, with Daniel Holdsworth. We got DJ, uh, another former Bulldog. I know exactly how Holdsworth plays, and you know on his day he's an alright player, just so inconsistent, um, and just I don't know. He probably just doesn't have it. You think by now he was going to be, if he was going to be something good, he'd be he'd be it by now, but he hasn't. But he's in this side, and he must be in our because we're only up 12 nil. I mean, to be honest, we should be up by so much more. And then we have what Chan Chad Townsend, who I think is pretty average, but um, they keep kept getting picked at, at the Warriors. What a tackle. Um, it's probably more due to the fact that Lulawai, who's the last bench spot, uh, he was just injured all the time. That's probably more of the reason, I would say. But you never know. Oh, Graham doesn't get there. I thought for a second Norman was going to go length of the field. So, as it's come to end the video, I'd like to say, uh, if you can leave a like, looks like we're going to win 12-0. Unless something happens in intersets, maybe. Um, but yeah, if you could leave a like, that'd be cool, like I said earlier. If we can hit 5 likes, that'd be great. Um, also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 500 subs. What a way to finish it. Tackled in goal. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, like I said... If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you for the next episode, guys. So, I'm not sure what that is, probably halfbacks, I'd say. Alright, see you guys. Bye.